Hello YouTube, it is Chris here, and in today's episode we're going to be discussing meeting your prepping goals for 2018. Stick with me. Welcome back everybody and thank you for sticking with me. Like I said, today we're going to be discussing meeting your prepping goals for 2018. If you're joining us for the first time, make sure you hit that subscribe button so you don't miss any of our new episodes or our daily giveaways. Additionally, make sure you hit that notification button so you don't miss anything. Also, we have a new round of our Amazon gift card giveaways and to enter, you need to be a subscriber and leave a comment on this video. We also pick winners in the very next episode, so if you enter on this particular giveaway, you'll find out who the winner is on the very next episode. As a lot of you guys know, we do live in an apartment, so prepping has gotta be a lot more intricate more analytical and more interesting given the limited space versus someone who may have a full-on homestead or an urban home. And about a month ago, we did our top 10 grid down apartment preps video. And in that you saw quite a pretty intricate list of items that we feel were important for people to prep in a bug in situation. Cause bugging out is definitely not ideal. It is something that is an absolute last resort. If you can stay at home, whether whatever situation you're in, that is always ideal because it is a place that is secure, familiar, and you know the local surrounded areas. And in that video we shared, there were quite a few things that we just didn't have or didn't prepare for. And we've made it a very strong priority to start filling gaps in our prepping and bugging checklist that we have, so to speak, to make sure that we are ready to go if we run into a very, very unpleasant situation. Now in the world of prepping, hardcore preppers, veteran preppers will have definitely thought of things like communication, waste management, and then also like things like first aid. However, decontamination and chemical cleanup, chemical protection, uh, biological agent protection, things like that are kind of glossed over typically for most preppers and most YouTube channels. Now there are a lot of things that we need to pick up in the decon and chemical protection area like protective gear, protective suits, masks, things like that. That's just some stuff we definitely still have to work on. But we definitely wanted to give you an update on some of the preps and some of the things we have been collecting and bringing in for our personal bug in survival kit to let you guys know the strides that we're taking. And hopefully through this video you'll be able to get some ideas for yourself. Now in the beginning right here, we have this stuff from a company called Fast Act. Now as we develop our decontamination and protective gear preps, we are gonna be diving in pretty deep into some of those videos as I feel they're extremely important and a subject matter that no one really covers in depth. This is the brochure that we got from our package. But this company is these decon kits that are good for acids, halogenated compounds, phosphorus compounds, acids and causatic gases, organic compounds and chemical warfare agents. And that's what really got my attention is if you find yourself in a situation where God forbid your local area becomes a epicenter of an accident, a chemical spill from a factory or an attack, you definitely want the ability to actually be able to clean up and protect yourself if you find yourself right in the heart of the situation. So we have these filtered masks. They are not like N95 masks. Like this stuff is designed to filter out even things like mustard gas. So these masks are pretty freaking legit. Let's say you have your protective gear, but what do you do in a local situation? Let's say the grid is down and you have to be able to safely remove and clean up some of those chemicals that are in your home, your local area, in your neighborhood, and not removing those safely in a grid down emergency you could cause further risk or harm to other people. So having tools, protective gear, things like that to be able to clean that stuff up is very, very helpful. And that's what this stuff does. Next up we have fire wipes. Now these are pretty exciting. These are actually developed by firefighters and these are soot and carcinogenic decon stuff. Now I'm not saying do you plan on being in 17 house fires in your life, probably not. But I felt keeping these in your bug out bag, a go bag, in your glove box, in your car, close to home, anything like that. These could be very, very helpful, and not just for yourself, but for your family, friends, and neighbors. These are the extra size large wipes. They're eight inch by 12 inch, so they're pretty substantial. But these are designed to help you remove soot and carcinogenic compounds on your skin. So if you found yourself, a family member, a loved one, in a very compromising situation where they're in a house fire, car fire, yourself and your family, say you guys get out, but all of the 
chemicals, the paints, the compounds, all that nasty stuff that is literally being burnt up in the fire and all those, all that smoke is getting in your lungs, on your skin. So these wipes could be very, very helpful in your ability to have rapid deployment and removal safely from the contacts of your skin, off of your face, off of your arms, because you're not gonna be fully rigged out like firefighter that has a full protective suit, masks and everything, and even these guys actually use these on their trucks for decontamination. For those of you who follow our video series on Walmart, you'll know that we actually picked up our bug and toilet, like we mentioned earlier in the video. But we wanted to make sure we had everything self-contained inside the bucket for storage. Like I said, in an apartment, our space is very, very limited. So after removing the lid, we have some of these Wizzy Wipes and Easy Towels. These are compressed towels that we're gonna be using as toilet paper tablets. One, they're really, really small. When you add just a little bit of water, you can use them as kind of a combination between a wet wipe and toilet paper. But the good thing is these things break down and biodegradable. Now running water, more than likely will be in short supply. So we wanna make sure we have some things to keep ourselves a little bit more hygienic and clean. So we have some of these wet wipes right here. These are also biodegradable. Then we've got some trash bags. These are eight gallon, 50 count, and these are scented. These ones are not biodegradable. These are ones we got in lieu because we actually have some on order. We have a hundred count of eight gallon ones that are actually biodegradable. They're really awesome. They kind of break down over time. Next in the bucket we have hand sanitizer because like I said, we're in water's in supply. So we need the ability to wash our hands and not spread any illnesses or bacteria or diseases. Then diving further, just in case you end up needing it, I just decided to stick in a U Dig It Pro. Even though we're gonna have some bags, we have a little mini shovel, so if we gotta do any digging close to our home and find a way to kind of contain some of that waste, you might want a bigger shovel realistically, but it's better than absolutely nothing. And then moving the bucket over to the side. We actually have some Tidy Cats kitty litter. And why do we have this? Well, we need to be able to keep our waste smell down. So if you take your can liner, you stick it right in here, and then you put your sheet on top, you take a scoop or so of this and you kind of dump it into the bag, and then when you ever do your waste, it kind of soaks everything up, hides some of the smell, you put a little bit over that on top of it, and that will help you keep the waste and the smell and nastiness down in your home, because the last thing you want is every odor, every disgustingness of every type of nasty overwhelming your home when the, when the grid is down. One of the areas we are seriously lacking in in my overall preparedness, we do have several external batteries that are pretty substantial. This is an Outdoor Extreme Energy, the 16,000 mAh, and these two are the 26,000 mAh batteries, one from Rav Power and Anchor. Now these are pretty substantial, but as you guys know, your needs for the whole family will probably be more substantial in a sustained grid down situation. So having adequate solar panels like 60 to 120 watts, big power stations that can help power up a lot of equipment are very, very critical. Now it's not essential, but when you are to already live in a city, it can be a very, very difficult transition where you don't have your own land to do homesteading type tasks. Next, we got a bug out roll from Canadian Prepper. Now I know you guys saw my 650 piece survival kit video where we have the all black bug out roll from Canadian Prepper, which is kind of like a Gen 1 or Gen 2 design. And we have basically our gear completely organized for a 72 hour or slightly longer survival situation where we actually have to leave our home and evacuate in an absolute emergency. Now this is the red one and we got the red one due to the fact that we wanted to have it clearly labeled as our first aid and trauma kit. And this is gonna be an overview. We're gonna be diving really, really deep into it in a future episode, but I'll kind of show you some of the contents here inside. So this is basically it. It is very, very long. It's like six feet long. We've got just a little bit of everything and I'll kind of go over the contents very, very quickly for you. We have some emergency blankets, a compass and some emergency whistles for signaling and we have some trauma shears and other type of forceps, things like that. We have hand sanitizers, some antiseptic wipes, alcohol prep pads, nitrile gloves. Right here we have some chest steel kit and some nasal and drill airways. We have some triangle bandages and some four x four non-woven sponges, some cold compresses and some things like tweezers, safety pins. We have two extra large SAM splints in here because they're probably an EMT's best friend in an emergency. We have some SWAT T tourniquets, some hemostatic gauze, and some Israeli bandages. We've got some abdominal pads. We have some elastic bandages. We have several of them. Then right here, since I don't have a full on suture kit, I actually have some skin staplers. Next, we have some hemostatic Celux gauze. We have some CPR masks. We have a flashlight. 
We have some safety pins and some Celloc powder, as well as some Celloc band-aids. Those are gonna be very useful for people who are anemic. So we have some outdoor skin protection, some medical tape, some tweezers, some insect protection, some OTC medications, the ouchy boo boo band-aids. And we kind of have like a hygiene kit right here. We have some camp soap, some Epic wipes to kind of clean off a little bit, some toilet paper tablets, and some field toiletry kits right here. In an emergency, just having this stuff on you when you set up your base camp, just kind of unroll the whole thing, put it inside your camp where it's out there ready, everything is visual. That is a very good plan to keep a lot of supplies at the ready and well organized. And then last but not least, we have our portable ham radios for communication. When cell phones and cell phone towers go down in a power outage, a lot of the repeaters and radio antennas will still actually be working. Now we're gonna be diving really, really, really deep into this as time goes on. And these are actually an awesome, awesome investment. It's like 15 bucks to be able to actually take and obtain your technician's license, which is the very first entry level for your ham radio license. We actually got one of these from Survival Boxes. We only had two, but Survival Boxes actually sent one of these, which is freaking freaking awesome. For like 36 bucks, we actually got a ham radio, which was awesome. Now we do have some antenna and battery upgrades gonna be coming for these base entry models, but it's a really good way for us to practice, train, and learn on the job. We have some local people and some clubs here in town that are pretty awesome. Now we do wanna give a shout out to GearBest, are the actual company that supplied these Alfang's UV5Rs. They're the very popular entry models because of the fact they're like 25 bucks. And we're gonna post links to GearBest where you can pick these up as well as some other links to places like Amazon and whatnot. So you can look at things like antenna upgrades and other items like that. The winner of yesterday's Amazon gift card giveaway is 240 Weatherby. Congratulations to 240 Weatherby, you are the winner. So definitely contact us on the back end of our channel so we can get your contact details. For us, 2018 is gonna be a very big year for us to actually take a lot of the items that are missing on our prepping bug in, bug out checklist and check those off as much as possible. We're gonna be setting our preps on a very high priority. This year, obviously you gotta pay things like your bills and expenses and personal items and savings and things like that. But all of our additional expenses, we're gonna be using our very small budget and doing everything we can to make investments and fill those gaps, like I said. And hopefully for 2018, this is the year for the newbies and the veterans to figure out where you're at in your checklist, kind of get that those brain juices flowing and figure out what areas you're lacking in and how to fill them if you find yourself in an emergency or an extended grid down situation. But that is about it for now. And if you enjoyed this talking point of fulfilling and meeting your prepping goals for 2018, definitely throw this video a big thumbs up and share this out with your friends and family in your social media networks so we can keep growing, thriving, and making awesome videos for you guys. But that is about it for now. Hope you guys have an absolute wonderful day. I'm out.